In this video, I want to show you how to set up a basic free look and really quite a simple manner. So I'm going to rush through this really fast, try to do it in 10 minutes. So I'm going to state this first. This only is going to work for basically setups that involve the camera attaching to the mesh. So unlike the FPS template that comes with Unreal Engine, this is only going to work if your camera attaches to the mesh, not if your mesh attaches to the camera, like in that template. So true first person setups, fake true first person setups and all that kind of stuff. They are good to go. Really just need the camera attached to the mesh, and that is it. So to begin, we're going to set this up. So when we hold down Alt, we want to start free looking. When we release it, we want to stop. So we're going to have a blueprint callable function. Let's give it the category of tutorial. And do void start free look. And we want to take in a boolean. So bool enable free look, just like so. Now I want to have two more functions, and I'll explain what those are here in a second. So we're going to do boolean valid turn, and then valid look up, or just valid up. Now, what these are going to be for is we're going to be using our input axis, so look up and turn, that come with the projects to basically control it. So if we are looking up or looking down, while free looking, we want those to take place and either give us a true or a false as to whether or not we can add input to our controller. So that's going to basically allow us to limit how far we look left, right, up, and down using these two functions. So we want these to also take in the axis value. So we're going to do float axis value. And now we can go ahead and create the definitions. So to begin, for start free look, we want to go ahead and set this up to a boolean. So we're going to have a boolean be free looking, which is going to be false by default. And let's set this to equal enable free look. So what we want to do here is if we are free looking, we want to disable our pawns using our yaw. So b use controller rotation yaw equals the opposite of b free looking. So if this is true, we are not going to be using our controller rotation yaw to turn our character. If it is false, we will use it. So if we free look, we want the controller or the uh, character to stay in place, not look left or right with us. You can kind of see my point. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and relaunch and give this a try really fast. Okay, make sure you actually have return value set up for the Boolean functions. Okay. Now we can set up the blueprint part of it. So I'm basically going to do it. So when we pull or, or when we press Alt, we want to start free look. And when we release it, we want to stop it. So start, stop. And over here, we're going to make use of our valid turn functions. So valid turn and valid up. And I'll get to those here in a minute. We're actually going to do one more thing really fast to them is we're going to give them a meta of expand bool as executions equals the return value. So add those to your valid turn, your valid lookup, and restart the editor. Okay, so we're going to be using them on our input axis turn and lookup. So let's just search for valid turn, like so, and valid up, like so as well, and just plug in the axis value. So what this is going to be doing is, as you can see, this is the reason for that meta. So now we have two execution pins, one true, one false. It just kind of makes the code look, or the blueprint look a little bit neater. And, well, that's really the main reason, in my opinion. A little bit neater, and it's also a little bit faster because we're not using a branch on top of it. So to begin with valid turn, what we want to do is, if we're free looking, then we want to get our delta, so basically the difference between our current actor location, our control rotation. So F rotator delta is going to equal our U Kismet math library. Search for delta, you'll see normalized delta rotator of our get actor rotation and our get control rotation. So in order to use the Kismet math library, you have to include Kismet, Kismet math library. Okay, now on top of that, here's where we check our limit. So float limit, and we're going to set it to 35. 
So here I also want to print out delta. So delta percent F, and this can be the delta dot yaw, because that's what we care about, and just see what it gives us. Okay, let's check the output log. I hold down Alt, go to negative, or sorry, we go positive with left, negative with right. So knowing that, we want to do a check. So if our delta dot yaw is going to be greater than our limit, we return false. And likewise, if it is less than the negative limit, so negative 35 is what this equals, we also want to return false. Now let's see if that actually blocks our looking left and right. Okay, we have a complaint, which would be where? Oops, I meant to make that a negative. So there we go, let's give it a try. Okay, I look left, I hit a wall. And now I can't move my mouse left or right. And if I go to the right, I hit a wall. And I can't move my mouse left or right, only up and down. That's because this is constantly returning false based upon our direction. So what we want to do is we want to make use of our axis value. So and I'll explain that here in a second. So what we want to do is check if our axis, or sorry, our delta dot y'all is greater than our limit. And our axis value is going to be less than zero. So our axis value, if we look left, this is going to be a negative value. So this also is going to be left for our limit. So if we're turning left, this is what's going to run with this logic here, as well as with this. So if these are both true, that tells us that we are looking left and hitting our limit, or if we're trying to turn left and hitting our limit. Now if we're hitting our limit to the left and we try to turn right, meaning this is a positive value, it will allow us to free up and move away from that wall so we can turn to the right. So we do the same thing down here except we want to do greater than zero. Now let's give it a try. All right, go left, we hit our wall, we go right, we hit our wall. So now we can bounce in between without any problem. Now we just got to do our up and down. So that's currently basically free range, it doesn't really matter, but it's going to be the exact same thing. So let's copy and paste all this, like so, and change y'all to pitch. And I'm going to comment this value out so we only print out our pitch. So, same manner, the only difference is these need to be reversed because the pitch is different. So if we're looking up, it's greater than a limit. I also want to check if it's less than our axis value because, again, these are backwards compared to our look left and right. So let's give this a try, and we should have our limit to 35 degrees, which we do. So I can only look up by 35 and left and right by 35. So now we have our little box that we cannot look past. Okay, last thing I want to cover, as you can see, if I look left and I let go of Alt, the character snaps to face the rotation. I want to make the, uh, the camera snap back to the character instead. So to do that, we want to store our control rotation. So store this when we start free looking and set it after the fact. So here's where we do a check. So if be free looking. So if we are not free looking, we want to set our control rotation. So we want to get our controller. So a controller, my controller equals get controller. And in here, do my controller. Well, we actually need to store it first. So F rotator free look control rotation. My controller set control rotation of free look control rotation. And outside of here, we want to go ahead and set it. So free look control rotation equals get control rotation. So let's go ahead and try this and see what happens. Okay, so now we hit play, we look left, and our camera snaps back, not the other way around. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick explanation. We're at nine and a half minutes of what's going on. When we start free looking, we obviously set a bull to tell us that we're free looking. And then in the case of we release it, meaning we are not free looking, we set our control rotation back to the rotation that we had when we started free looking. So in that case, if we're looking straight out in front of us, and then we look left while we free look, when we let go of free look, this code's going to run right here, and it's going to snap ourselves back to looking straight. Now the reason for this valid turn and lookup functions, these are for basically our limit. 
So we get the delta. So think of this kind of almost like the difference between our current actor's location or rotation and our control rotation. So when we look left and right, the yaw is going to have a different value when we look up and down. The pitch is going to have a different value. And same thing for roll, but we don't have roll. So what we want to do is do a check. So if our difference between our actor and control rotation is greater than our limit, so 35 degrees, then what we want to do is basically return false, telling us that we cannot look past 35 degrees in the positive or the negative for when we're doing our free look. So that's kind of like our hard limit there. Next up, we want to do another check to make sure that our axis value, so this is the direction that we are moving our mouse. So if we're moving it left, then axis value is going to be a negative value, so it's going to be less than zero. So if our delta dot yaw is greater than our limit, meaning we are going to the left and it hits our limit of 35, and we're moving our mouse to the left, we're going to return false, telling us that we cannot go any farther. But if we move our mouse to the right while we're at the limit, this part right here will be false, meaning this will not run. It's just going to jump right over it, check this, so on and so on. So this is basically left, and this is right. And it's the exact same thing for the ballot up. So that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next one.